everyone. Welcome to Studio Sunday. You gonna wave, oh, honey? Hi. <laughs> I will always wave. <laughs> this has been a crazy week with Terry finishing up ever mm -hmm. and getting it ready for the printer. He's got three more days to draw and then he's got to uh, get it over to him. So he's working fast and furiously. Um, I think everybody's really going to love it though, don't you? Yeah, it's different. Yeah. So I'm very excited about it. It's... You don't seem very excited. <laughs> I am. Inside, I'm very excited. Are you just tired? Yeah. A little bit. It's been a haul. Uh, I was thinking about it yesterday that it's a little bit like making a movie. You've been on this movie crew and I read about them working for three months, you know, and that's all they do. And, and I think about the stamina it must take for those people, you know, like a James Bond movie, how long they work on it. Yeah. And to keep the energy up to the very end must be really hard. Yeah. That's why they usually just give up and just start crashing cars at the end. <laughs> but I think you excel at making your endings, you know, it just doesn't dribble down to the end. You really put a punch there at the end. So, Thank are you, you at the punch? I, I'm at the, I'm at the, oh boy, I'm at that stage where they go, you're just about to get it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, if you, just so you know, if you guys want a hardcover edition, you can only get it through through us. The link goes live tomorrow at 10 a.m. Mm -hmm. All pre-orders will receive a black and white print and our undying gratitude. Pre-orders help us pay for the print run, so thank you everyone who pre-orders these books from us. Yes, uh, thank you. It's going to ship in mid-November. Also, don't forget about Terry Moore Live, October 23rd through the 25th. We'll have some new sketches, artwork, live signings and panels, some fun giveaways, and some flash deals, so don't miss it. One more thing, this will be the first time you can subscribe to Serial, Terry's new series starting in January. Uh, it's hard to anyway, imagine. U.S. subscriptions only. Sorry, international people. It is just too crazy right now to do international subscriptions. But international readers should be able to order um, from their local comic shop if they order books through Diamond. If your local comic book shop doesn't, there are a couple of shops that we know in the UK that can help you out. Email us and I'll give you that information. Um, subscriptions will be open until we place our first order for the book, which will be the end of December. So you'll have a while to get those subscriptions in. It's a 10 issue series, so the subscription is for 10 issues. And it's $64.90 US only. Okay. Um, I'm going to subscribe. And by the way, we recently upgraded our website server, and they assure us there will be no more crashes. So when you go on to pre-order uh, ever or buy art in the art sale starting October 23rd, uh, you should have no problem at all. You just have to um, go about your business because they have assured me that we will not crash again. And we'll find this out tomorrow. Yes, we'll 10 a.m. Okay. Um, and they'll, they'll also be on standby to make sure everything goes smoothly. So that's a relief to me, and I'm sure it will be to you, too. Um, anything else from you, Mr. Moore? No, I've been uh, right here. So if you want to talk about this world, I'm good. But the real world, I've kind of checked out for now. Well, you, you've missed a lot, but we're not going to discuss it here. <laughs> okay. I'm sure everything's <laughs> been going great. <laughs> Yeah, no problem. It's all oh. butterflies and, and rainbows. 2020, we're living the dream. Yeah, you got it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we're counting down the days, guys. 2021 is on its way. Okay, you ready to get on the hot seat? <sighs> yeah. Okay. Okay. By the way, you guys, send me some questions for the hot seat. There I'm going to have to start asking Terry what he's going to give me for Christmas. <laughs> there have been comments. Uh, there's just questions in the comments and things like that. Oh, I don't read the comments. You don't read the comments? <laughs> no. All they do is talk about you. Oh, jeez. Well, maybe I'll start reading them. Yeah, you but should. But yeah, if you can send me uh, questions to mail at abstractstudiocomics.com as well. And I will start looking at the comments. I try not to look at that. It's too many compliments. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Way too many. Yeah. Oh, 
love. Too much love. Yeah. Okay. The first question is, will you ever do commissions again? <laughs> yeah. I've got a line starting. Um, and I'm sorry, guys, but yeah, this, this just kind of shut it all down. Um, but you haven't done commissions in a couple of years. I would sneak some in. Uh, like, but you know what? Uh, it seemed like all, even in the early part of 2020, it was uh, for charities or something. Yeah. So that wasn't, you know, the norm. Um, but yeah, you're right. It's been a while. It is. I it used is. to take a commission list, um, you know, once, maybe twice a year. Yeah, I'll take 10 people and draw some big 11 by 17 and ink it. It's been a while for that. That takes that's time consuming. <laughs> that takes and time. And this is it, right? But what do you want to do? Just uh, draw out a. I don't know. It depends on whether you want uh, commissions or uh, the next issue. <laughs> so uh, when I was doing the issues, I would try to get ahead just a little bit, and then I'd have two weeks or a week to do commissions. Uh, I mean, I try to get ahead of the book, and then I would do some commissions. This graphic novel routine has not allowed me to do that. So once this is over, we get oh, back. your life is going to change. I think my whole life's going to change. I think the world is going to open up to you. I think it will be a better when my life changes. America will get better. Ah, it will just be a sign of the times. Okay. Yeah. So okay. We'll get on top of the schedule. Get back to normal schedule. You know, single issues, and throw in some commissions, a couple every, between every issue, and life will be rosy. Okay, you guys hear heard it here. That's my plan. Yeah. Okay. Okay, well, well, we'll see how that works out for you. Okay. Okay, good. Okay. The second question is, do you ever go back and reread your previous work? Does it help you move forward to see what you've done, or are you finished with it once you've ended the story? It will surprise you to know that um, I don't think I've ever gone back and read a book uh, as a book. I read them over and over as I make them, and then once I finish, I'm straight on to the next one. And I feel like if I go back and read them, it would be like, you know. Now you've gone back and read SIP. No. I've, Maybe you've read segments of it because I've, I've seen segments. you reading it. I've, yeah. seen, I've read segments, but I have never gone back and read the Omnibus as a collective. Um, I go back and read segments when I need when I need to to get the information from that scene or something like that, and it's just because I I don't want to uh, I don't want to rehash that rehash that or stay in the past or I don't I have this thing that I need to stay in the productive years and I don't want to get into my sentimental years like oh that was a good year and I did all this and that. <laughs> 1902 was a good year. Yeah. I don't want to do that. I want to always I stay about the next project and I'm always thinking about the next thing. So um, So what are you going to do with uh cereal? Because it's Zoe. Well, it's all in here and um Are if, you taking her out of the Rachel Rising universe? Um, yeah, well, yeah, the story happens in a different town, in a different location, and she is on her own. So, um, yeah, Zoe has a life beyond uh, the group she was hanging out with in Rachel. Um, she, uh, so, yeah, it's a new story. I will always dip back into the past stories to connect things, because I think that's really fun to do, to build on the foundation uh, that you've already laid. But... So I go back and wallow in the past and think, oh, that was really cool. I don't want to do that because then I'm afraid I might lose that hunger to make the next page. If I go back and I'm satisfied with what I did, you know, I want to be hungry to make the next one. Like the next one's going to be so much better. That, is it? I keep that frame in mind. Oh, is it? Oh, way better. The next stuff is way, way better. Oh, good. <laughs> good. you got to be looking forward. When I retire, I'll look back and read it all and think, I can't believe I did that. But right now, it's like, oh, man, i got to do better. Let's do the next one. Okay. So what are you drawing today? Uh, well, today, because we're all about Ever, um, I'll, I do want to do a sketch of Ever. Um, I would like to offer an Ever sketch in the upcoming October uh, live event, October 23 through 26, 25. 23 through 25. 
So Terry Moore Live. Terry Moore Live. And we're going to have uh, a sketch cell, of course. And uh, I, it would be good to have a never sketch in there, just a good ever sketch. So I'll do a never sketch today, and you can watch me do that. Okay. Sound good? That's it. That's it for me, kiddos. Uh, have a great week, and we'll see you back here next Sunday. I do have a question for you. My uh, uh, basil plant is now over five feet tall. I have more basil than since. So <laughs> <laughs> tell me what to do with all this basil I have. I've given it away. People don't want to see me coming anymore. Uh, Can you bottle it and sell it? You can't bottle basil. A bottle of basil is a good thing. <laughs> Let me know if you guys have any bright ideas about what to do with all this basil. If we try to, you know, send some out to our fans, I'm, the police may think it's, you know, illegal substances and, and we'd get in trouble. Well, no, they know it was basil right away. You can't ship basil across state lines. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you guys have a good week and we'll talk to you next week. Okay, meet me here. Why don't we start with some outlines, just some guides to help me get started. There we go. You can tell where I'm going. <laughs> um, and I like to have, have a little bit of an attitude and that starts with the head cocked. I was listening last night to a, while well, I was drawing, I was listening to a, a former um, government security chief talk about body language. I thought that'd be interesting as an artist. And he was talking about what we all think are signs of lying or covering up, but they're actually not. They're more like self-soothing um, motions, like wrap, you know, folding your arms while you're listening to somebody. Doesn't necessarily mean you're covering up a secret. It just means you're hugging yourself, self-soothing in a moment. Or he said sometimes people just do that because that's just a more relaxing way to stand. This makes more sense to me than the myths. And again, what I have taken, what I've started doing is not trying to get anything perfect. Um, everything is roughed in at about the same level. So as I rough in the eyes, I also rough in the nose and the mouth. They're all at the same rough level. Uh, because at this point, what matters more than anything is, you know, the measurements, the alignment, all that. If I used to be, I would go in and I would draw a perfect eye. And then I would draw another eye. And then I would draw the nose and the mouth. And suddenly when you get these features here, one of the eyes looked off. One was too high. And I had to go back and redo it. And then I'm chasing the other eye for an hour. And then I would draw a face like that. And then, but the other side would be too wide. And I wouldn't see it until I got to the hair. And then you have to go erase all that, redo that whole side of the face because, you know, it's not matching this side. It's a lot easier to um, look at it right now um, and see the alignments and the symmetry. And one of the th reasons I think um, we might draw asymmetrical sometimes is we focus and then we focus and then we focus. And you, it all looks good when you look at one thing at a time, but that's not how you look at a drawing. The way you look at a drawing is you just hold it up and look at it all dead on. And it, if there's something asymmetrical, it stands out immediately. Um, but that, you know, so you need to kind of get to where you're looking at it like a viewer and getting the symmetry in as you go. Um, and I think that may be the thing that I was admiring so much in more polished artists, real illustrators, who had these beautiful drawings with um, symmetry. Their eyes never mismatched. Um, the two sides of the jaw were always in alignment. They had the ability to, whether it's natural or learned, they had the ability to look at the overall picture as they were drawing in the details. And by looking at the entire picture, uh, instead of just focusing only on the nose, 
um, I'm looking at the nose in relation to everything. The mouth, how far out is it? It's about as far as the pupils. And I'm watching that in relation to the whole face. And now all these features are in symmetry. And the chin, how wide is it? About as wide as that bottom lip. Pull this jaw over to about there, about there. And I'm not looking at anything else. I'm just looking at the whole bottom half. Is that all symmetrical? Yeah. Now the hairline, pretty low for this girl with thick hair. Hair comes back from behind the neck. Neck symmetry uh, on the jawline right there. Thoracic muscles that you don't really see. Trapezius. Shoulder, collarbone, there's the bone that is the circle that supports the entire neck assembly and attaches to the rib cage. And then the shoulder hinges off that. There you go. Um, so the nuts and bolts are there. And now what you'll see is I kind of have um, a bland face. Yeah, that's nice, uh, but it doesn't say anything. It, that's the most generic looking expression I can think of. It, I don't care at this point. All I cared about was getting a good drawing of her going, getting it started. And now, if I want to go in and give her an expression, give her an attitude, whether she's being uh, disbelieving what she's hearing or she likes what she's hearing, now is when I can do that. Okay, so for you to get a dead on picture, I don't know if that's straight on with the camera, but that's what I have. And you can see how I locked in the placement of the features and the symmetry, and that's all that really mattered for me at the moment. But I also managed to get my basic character on the page. Um, and now I have something I can work with. So if we follow this one, you know, I liked it that she had her glasses on top of her head. Let's do that. She has fashionable big sunglasses up there. Okay, and I'll detail that in in a minute. Okay. Now I'm going to lighten this stuff up and work on attitude, and um, I may um, I may do this double time. So because you may not want to watch me do this for 20 minutes. This is a handy little uh, sharpener from Faber Castell. Uh, it's really good because you don't drop the stuff everywhere. This is actually the better sharpener. Uh, it's very very sharp. But um, you need to do it over the waste basket or right over the concrete convention floor. Because, <laughs> uh, yeah. It's cheap too. You just put it in your pocket like a guitar pick. You're ready to go. One thing I notice when drawing portraits is that putting the inside corner and outside corner of the eye, making sure there's a definition for them, uh, really mattered. Um, in cartooning, I would tend to blow off one or the other, uh, particularly the inside corner. And um, it really kept the eye from being having a definition. How big that black dot is depends upon the lighting. You know that. Get the eyes placed, nice thick eyelashes because you're young and you have eyelashes. A 
a little bit of a rise on this one. I, her eyebrows are thick and straight across. She has more of a straight nose, so I'm not going to do that line because that just complicates the drawing. But I can indicate the end of the nose with that light shadow right there that goes, takes an upward twist right there. That little line and that right there is all I needed to show that nose. If you want to go further than that, you get into the darkening of both sides of the nose and now you've got the, you're, have a whole rendered out pencil drawing that you're committed to. That's not what we're trying to do here. And you'll notice um, this side of the mouth has uh, just the hint of an upturn on it. And then this side of the mouth does not really necessarily match it. Um, that little lopsidedness is the casual smile. Relaxed, casual. I can put a, just a little bit there to show that the cheeks are full. But you can also put this line here to indicate that there are strong cheekbones right here. And then the, the jaw hangs down off these cheekbones. You have a choice here. Does the jaw come straight, uh, which is kind of a hard look? How deep is her chin? Uh, that makes a big difference on her the personality of her face. So I don't do normally do the straight jaw unless somebody has a, a no body fat on them. I tend to round this out, which is hard for me to get sometimes pulling the pencil, but I can get it by pushing the pencil. Um, so I realize that that is one of my faults. Uh, pulling the pencil may not always get pulling by pulling I mean pull this way. I get a different line, uh, natural curve going this way than I do going that way. So I try to find a way to compensate for that. And I really don't want the chin to be much lower than that right there. Pulling. The good thing about pulling is you can see both sides. I can see where I'm going. So that's the chin I ended up with, if you think that's symmetrical. And here's the ears, small earrings. Um, pulling the hair up and over shows uh, this volume, the volume of hair, and a lower hairline, like no more, no less, no, no more than that distance right there. Some people actually even go lower. Um, we're not going to do that. And then a natural wave that, that happens. Now is when I would bring in the um, you know what? The sunglasses aren't working for me on this drawing, so I'm going to get rid of them. There. We just took the sunglasses off. And now I'm doing to the hair what I did with the face, which is... And I'm not done with the face. There's a detail I need to add. Now I want to show long flowing hair, but I don't want to be too um, orderly and strict with it. It needs to look like it has some body and life to it. I want to get rid of that because it'll, it'll always show no matter how hard you pencil over it. And I'm just laying a base coat now, just like an undercoating on a painting. 
it's going in the right direction and it's loose. There's a variation of gray and, uh, you know, from light gray to dark gray, and that's good. This will be darker in here no matter what. That's the inside. Making long lines here. Need a little more height on the head. Okay, and this is not, of course, you've seen my drawings, I hope. This is not um, how the hair ends up looking, but it is how I get the base coat for the hair in there. And um, then when it's time to finish the hair, I come in and carefully lay in individual strokes like that. And the bold line that def that defines the uh, the front line of a piece of, of a bulk of hair, or like that. Then you come in, and each individual section you tone in the the uh, graduation of each section like that. Top and bottom, there's a reflection. See? Um, this is the part where you have to just put on the music and chill out and just uh, be happy to be sitting in front of your drawing doing your drawing thing uh, because it's a little time consuming. Uh, but if you put in the time and the care here, the uh, this is what makes the joint look polished and um, you end up with something that you you think is really nice to look at down in here uh, where the hair gets longer you're using longer strokes because if I used a bunch of short ones it would suddenly look like it's all choppy So I try to maintain the, the illusion of, oh, this stuff is uh, just hanging loose and wild. She needs to brush it, but at the same time, make it look thick. If you don't make it look thick, it'll look like it's uh, oily and separating, um, and she should wash it. <laughs> which is actually a, a look that is in this book, in the middle of the story of the book. Um, um, after having been through some adventures and being frozen and thawing out, uh, I did want that look for the hair. So, knowing how to get the bad look is, is a valid thing too. You need to know how to draw oily hair, not just uh, freshly shampooed hair. If you're doing stories, you need to know, you know, what does hair look like at its best, at its worst? Um, how do you make the character look like they just spent the night in a horror movie and you're looking at them the next day in the police office, police station? The police office. Every strand of hair, hand-drawn. Good grief. Okay, I like the definition over here. It's not here, so I'll come back in. Try to match it. I think I did a better job over here than I did over here. But it does match. 
doesn't have to be perfect, y'all, because it's human, organic. It will change the minute she turns her head. Okay, so let's get into the final touches here. Um, not everybody has everything in their neck showing. So we're not going to get into all that. She's not He-Man of the universe or She-Ra. Okay, one thing about her is freckles. And when I posted the first drawing of ever, I did get messages from people with freckles saying, thank you for representing the freckle nation. You're welcome. I think it's cute. I just added some tone there to define the, um, whatever those two things are called. I forget the word. Okay, and uh, long hair uh, off the, well, sideburns, but the, it coming in front of the ear. Um, it also helps define the um, face. Okay, um, the entire story of Echo uh, almost the entire story, this girl is wearing the same thing. And it is a sweater that has a just a, a basic, you know, Scottish wool design to it. And the way I do the Scottish wool design is I just do a bunch of circles. And every time I do these circles, I think about a cartoonist I knew when I first started uh, back in the 90s. Uh, her name was Terry Wood, T-E-R-I, and she had a comic book called Wandering Star. She's a very nice person. And she and I did a, actually did an illustration together for Sandman anthology or collection of pinups. I penciled it and she inked it. And the way that Terry Wood would ink is uh, using circles, very tight circles with hair, with a rapidograph pen. So this is very loose circles, making a pattern. I have never once scanned this and turned it into a Photoshop cut and paste thing that I could save time with. I go to the trouble and just always draw it. And Terry would, she would do tight circles like that. And she would do it on the whole page. I mean, it would take her a day or two to do a whole page drawing, but it just looked fantastic. And anyway, to finish the story, she did the Sandman drawing and turned, I saw it and I said, oh my gosh, all that, all that dark shadow black on the wall it looks like hand-drawn tight circles. Did you really draw all that? She said, yes, of course. So, much respect to Terry Wood. She's a wonderful cartoonist. Okay, guys. Uh, I think we have our, our sketch here. This will be for sale um, in the sketch cell that we will have October 23 through 25. And let's get after that. This paper really loves pencil. Once it Greg gets a, some pencil in there, he doesn't want to give it up. Okay. Sign it. And this is ever right up here one more smudge the smudges are coming from right there because of all this so you'll see a lot of people you know animators and then I see a lot of cartoonists that'll have a glove a white glove on the cotton cotton white glove that you can get at the art store and uh, they leave the, um, uh, the, the the cloth here and then they cut the fingers out here so you have all your fingers ready but this side and I tried it and it does help a lot 
but it still gets dirty. I mean, you have to get like a new glove um, or a fresh glove every day. Um, I guess you can wash them, but they fall apart. But anyway, there we are, guys. Ever.